So yeah, as you said, uh, we will talk today about unit test integration in Azure DevOps. Uh, we have a small agenda. We will review all the concepts that we have here in this title. I mean, unit test, Azure DevOps, and also uh, all um, the things related to quality and how to um, have uh, um, um, continuous quality, continuous integration uh, in our project, um, keeping the focus on, 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 on the quality and supporting us using a unit test. So that's the plan for, for today. And feel free to, you know, ask um, my questions and, and, you know, if you have a contribution or um, an idea about something that I am explaining you, feel free to, to, to share with, with us. So let's start. Um, so uh, in regarding our agenda for today, uh, we will talk first about Azure DevOps. I don't know if you have experience with this tool or not, but basically we will we will check uh, how Azure DevOps uh, works and the concept in general. Uh, this is the first step. Then we will talk about unit testing. Uh, I have a demo uh, using .NET Core and C Sharp, uh, but the concept is exactly the same for all the programming language and all the technologies around the world. It's exactly the same propose or the, the same goal. Uh, so yeah, with this demo, we will understand what is unit testing. And then we will see how to create a continuous testing schema uh, using Azure DevOps uh, and unit test integration. And then finally, we will uh, see, we will, we will review another module in Azure DevOps which is test plan. And we will see how test integration with Azure DevOps works. Uh, so basically we will integrate all the concept that we will review at the beginning. So that's the plan. We will review every concept and then we will integrate all the concepts, uh, all these concepts uh, together. So let's start with Azure DevOps. So what is Azure DevOps? So DevOps, as you know, is like a culture in a company that involve people, process, tools, uh, projects, everything in the company in order to uh, have a continuous improvement, continuous improvement culture or continuous improvement philosophy. So the idea is if you have a process that is taking a long time, so we need to find out a way to reduce the time or to automate some tasks in order to you know uh, improve the quality increase the uh, um, velocity that's the idea with with devops so it's a culture because finally sometimes the problem is a process sometimes the problem is uh, people that maybe is working in something that uh, they don't have the skills and or sometimes for example we we are not using the right tool sometimes uh, for example uh, we have uh, legacy projects and we need to you know try to uh, create something special for those legacy projects and have those legacy projects uh, um, with continuous deployment and that kind of thing. So it depends on the situation, but finally everything is involved in this in, in this culture. Um, so if you want to start uh, to use Azure DevOps, you can do it because finally it's free uh, for the first five users. Uh, so you can start using Azure DevOps for your personal project, or if you have a small startup and you only have five, five developers or three developers or something like that is enough. So you can start with that and then you have to pay a subscription for every new user. But at the beginning, you can start uh, for free. Um, it, it's important to highlight that Azure DevOps is a sweet DevOps. Uh, this means that Azure DevOps has all the tools related to process, people, um, and technology in general uh, for a software development company. So some tools has, fo uh, has the focus on um, code, for example, or some tool has the focus on uh, planning and agile, agile, agile methodologies. But Azure DevOps has integration for all this. So we have, for example, boards in order to, to have this, um, this planning and also to uh, uh, have a culture in the company. We have repos in order to 
uh, keep the control on the on the code and ma managing uh, repos. We have pipelines in order to create all the automate, uh, automate tasks, like, for example, deploy an application or run the unit testing. Uh, we will see this in, in today in the, in the demo. Or, for example, if we want to, to analyze the quality of the code, or if we want to analyze the security, if our code is, is, is safe or not, there, there are many uh, tools in pipeline that we can use in order to automate uh, this kind of tasks and, and, you know, get the reports about this. Also, we have test plan in order to create uh, test, different, different kind of uh, test suites and um, you know have some um, tester um, checking the application and also we have an integration between pipelines and test plan we will see this in in, in the next demos and also we have artified in order to create package or libraries um, internally in our project in order to share code with with, with different projects um, so basically we have everything that we need in order to create a project um, a project from from scratch uh, and to production so yeah we, we have everything that we need we we don't need other tools maybe we can integrate azure devops with other tools but uh, you don't have to buy something else so, so this is the difference with the atlassian suite for example where you have jira only jira for planning for agile for you know the communication and and all the the tasks that the the, the thing is working on you have a, a, one product for that specific uh activity but you need to buy or you need to integrate Jira with all their tools in order to, you know, in order to move forward and 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 um, have a, a managing over all their stages in in the in the in the project. So this is the difference for me. I mean, Azure DevOps is it has all the things that we need to um, create a project, and 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 this is the 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 best part. Also, uh, it has a really good UI. It's pretty friendly. It's really easy to use. It's really easy to understand. And also, it has a really good integration with Azure. So don't get me wrong. You can integrate Azure DevOps with AWS, with GCP. And also, you can use uh, scripts in order to connect with other cloud providers, like, uh, for example, Alibaba Cloud. But finally, with Azure, we have a special integration because finally, is this uh, the product uh, was made by the same, you know, uh, the big, big, uh, Microsoft is the owner of both uh, um, tools or, or both products. So finally, uh, we will find some extensions and some additional tools in order to perform this integration uh, pretty easy. And Azure DevOps now is very popular. Actually, five years ago, uh, Azure DevOps was trying to, you know, to have a good um, assertion from people and developers. And now many companies around the world are using Azure DevOps. It's a skill that we can, um, we can um, have, a skill that we can work and um, because finally it will be useful in the future and many probably a company is going to work uh, this this tool uh, so let's see the first topic that we have which is unit uh, testing so what is uh, unit testing so what when we are talking about unit testing we are we are talking about test a unit or portion of code so basically, the idea is to um, get a function, for example, a model, a property in a model, and test if that um, that function or that model is doing the right thing, is working fine. So with this, we are preventing possible issues in the future. The idea with unit testing is not about the present, it's not test the current code, it's prevent that a possible change in the future can break, could, could break the application, could, could uh, create um, a different behavior and unexpected behavior in the application. We don't want to do that. And this is why unit test is very important. It's very important to highlight that unit testing, uh, a unit test uh, has to be um 
automated and reusable. So it's, it's like a philosophy. This is something standard uh, for all the um, unit testing libraries across all the technologies. So we need to have the possibility to execute the unit testing with using a command or using a tool or using something, but automatically we don't, we, we don't I mean, it's, it's really uncomfortable to execute every unit test uh, manually. And we don't want to do that. And this is why we need to, to have a way to automatically run all the unit testing in a project. And also if, um, a, uni, uh, a unit testing uh, should be reusable. We need to have the possibility to execute the same unit testing, but using different parameters or using different information. All the libraries support this. Sometimes we don't use it. We don't use this feature but all the libraries support this, um, this approach. So uh, we can say that unit test is co-testing code. Basically the idea is to have uh, the developers creating, um, um, creating this test uh, because finally the only one way to create unit testing is to uh, write code that is going to call, uh, is going to call or use the code that uh, we want to validate. Very important to highlight that unit testing is the base for TDD or test-driven development. Uh, this methodology um, keep the focus on the quality using unit testing. So basically the idea is to create first the test, all the tests for a specific module, for example, uh, all the tests obviously are going to fail at the beginning because we don't have, um, we, we don't have an, an implementation in the code. Then after implement the code, we can see if our code our code is passing or not, is doing the right thing or not, because we already have all the tests running, all the tests checking, all the possible scenarios, all the business logic, and that's the idea. If you have, um, if you had the opportunity uh, to use, for example, Codility or Hacker Run or, for example, FreeCodeCamp, that kind of platform, uh, you are using TDD because finally, when you join to this platform all the tests are uh, are already done and and you have to implement the code and after implement the code you will try you will check if your code is working or not executing the unit testing that uh, this platform has um are, are ready in in for for that exercise that you are doing so that's the idea with tdd um some companies apply this is not common because finally um, yeah, we need we need to keep the quality, but sometimes it's more important to to fix the code or you know create implementation and see um, the results in the interface, that kind of thing. But uh, uh, then uh, we can create the unit test when everything is working fine. Uh, I mean, this is okay. Obviously, uh, many companies work works in in this way, but finally in TDD. This is not the idea. The idea is to create first the, the test and then the implementation. Um, very important to highlight that there are many libraries and utilities for unit testing. You can choose the utility that or the library that you, you, you think fits with your project or with your requirements. Or if you feel more comfortable using XUnit or in unit, you can do it. I mean, it, it doesn't matter all. It, it, I mean, the syntaxes or the, the, the functions that we need to use in order to create our unit test is a little different maybe, but the concept is the same and the philosophy about unit testing is the same. So uh, let's see a um, quick demo uh, related to unit testing. Let's see how unit testing works with a demo that I have um, here that is using um is using um oh, sorry oh let's see i will share with you here demo here okay perfect uh, this demo is using xunit and .net so let's see this demo here uh it's something very simple so we we have to a project we have the original project which is coverlet demo we have a uh, uh, this um it has this um, calculation. Let me let me perform a zoom here. Okay, yeah. Uh, this calculation has some uh, math operations like zoom, like zoom to number, like divide, 
Um, and yeah, we have these three methods here. And the idea is to check if these methods are doing the right thing. So basically, uh, to, to, to do that, we are using the uh, test demo, uh, the test project. This test project is using XUnit. Let's see all the libraries that we have here. Um, we are using, um, and, oh, sorry, and unit. We are using an unit here. We are using a test, the test SDK, that, which is important in order to get the results in the console. And also, um, we here, we are using coverlet, coverlet collector. This coverlet collector is very important to calculate the co-coverage. So the co-coverage is um, a met, uh, like a concept related to how many uh, code, how, how much code we are covering with our unit testing. We need to know if we are uh, um, if we are uh, creating unit testing for all the functions around the project. So see, the project is very small. It's, it's really easy to know if we are creating, if we have a unit test for that uh, function or for that method or not. But when the project grow and is uh, really large, the code that we have is, is really difficult. So we need to use this kind of tools in order to get a, a cover our percentage and you know keep the focus on have a really high quality in our unit testing. Um, so let's see how, um, how the test works here. So here we have um, a setup class. Um, no, we don't have any implementation here. Um, we have a uh, common class actually uh, in C sharp, but the differences are the this attribute that we are using here, and we are um, um, defining this method like uh, unit testing. So for example, we have uh, one unit testing here. This unit testing is um, creating, we are creating an array here. Then we are creating the calculation class that we, we saw before. And also then uh, we are executing the function. So with this result, we can check if the uh, unit testing is passing or not, if, the, if this sum method is working fine or not. Uh, so in this case, we have an array of number. We have one, five, four. And in the assert, we are uh, checking if the result is 10, which is the you know sum of these numbers. So if we use the command, in this case, .NET test, we can execute all the tests in the, in the project. In this case, we only have one test, which is this one. Uh, and the, in this case, is passing, right? Is passing. If we change the number here or the logic, for example, if we go to sum and we add here, uh, for example, plus one, okay? And we execute the test again. The test now is not passing. This is the idea with unit testing. If someone changed the code, change the code, especially when we have math, mathematic operations, when we have calculations, when we have a, a process with a file, with, with, with strings, that kind of things um, that are uh, so confused sometimes. And sometimes the developer, when, when, so, uh, especially when we have a legacy, legacy code, uh, it's really difficult to understand at the beginning and he or she is trying to fix something and maybe in trying to fix that uh, a scenario in particular can affect others. And the unit test can help us to identify, to detect if something was, uh, uh, is break, if something is break, uh, so if something is broken in, in, in the code. So that's, that's the idea. In this case, if a developer add this uh, number here or change something in, in this uh, functionality, this is very simple, obviously. If this is not a real scenario, but when you have a, something really, really difficult to read with a lot of uh, calculation, a lot of operation, sometimes um, you can break something and with this, you can identify if, 
if um, yeah, if something is 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 not working as expected. So if we execute the game, obviously is this is going to pass. Okay, and if we want to um, get the code coverage, we need to add a parameter. So how this work? I have the command here. Yeah, so we, we can use .NET test. Again, it's going to run all the unit tests in the project, but also if we add the parameter collect coverage equals true, we will get the percentage and, and we will know how much code we are covering uh, with the current unit tests in the project. So if we execute this, so we can see now um, we have result and we can see 15.78% um, uh, and about regarding methods, we have 25% uh, percent of the, uh, uh, we are covering 25%. If we go to the project, let's, let's go to the project. We can see that we have a unit testing for Zoom. Okay, this is one method. We, we don't have uh, unit test for Zoom to numbers and for divide. We don't have um, uh, unit testing for this, but also there are another, there is another method here in program, which is the, the main method here. So this is why we have four methods. Only one method has unit testing, and this is why we are getting 25% of the cover. So uh, this is the idea. This is the idea. I, I mean, this is very simple, obviously. Uh, it's really difficult for me to show a large code here with, with a lot of things. But with this, you have an idea about uh, how uh, unit testing works and why it's important to get the code coverage and what why it's important to have unit tests in our project. So let's go back to the slides. And go, we will go to another topic now. So uh, now we will talk about traditional testing uh, scheme. So with this, um, this is the idea or the traditional way that normally we 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 use in order to uh, create a project from scratch and move it forward until uh, to uh, production, yeah, to a release version. So there are many back things here, right? Uh, but I will start. I want to, you can participate here. I want to ask you guys, what uh, what do you see here that is wrong? What, uh, what issues you can see here in this schema? So for example, I will start. So the first thing that I see is uh, even we have, uh, we detect a, a, a bug or an issue here in the planning, and then in the design, we are not fixing those books or those, those issues. We are not fixing that. We need to wait until the test stage in order, in this stage here in test, in order to fix it, in order to identify what is wrong and then fix it. So this is, uh, this is not a, a good strategy because finally something that is very small in the test stage, maybe it's not a small, but maybe now it's a big issue and it's a little more difficult to fix. And this is um, uh, this is something wrong for me. This is something that, that is, is not good for the project. So guys, feel free. Uh, what what are the other things that you see here that are uh, are 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 not uh, are not good for the project? We have too many testers. <laughs> exactly. Good point. We have a lot of effort here. I have to pay a lot of money, a lot of people in this specific stage, and all all the testers are working only in this in this stage. I mean, what are uh, what are doing the tester before in the other in the other stages? Maybe they are reviewing documentation. Maybe they are uh, reading something about the project, but they are not performing something that uh, to improve the quality. Good point. Thanks. Something else? Maybe on the stage of construct, we can reduce the count of uh, bugs in writing unit tests or something like that. 
Exactly. This is this is the state with more books always because yeah you are you are creating and creating more code. And um, sometimes uh, if you don't have a good uh, if you don't have uh, for example uh, senior developers or lead developers, sometimes we can apply back practices and that kind of thing. So this is why constructor uh, construct is is always the state with more books. If we if you use unit testing, if you use code review, if you use pre programming, if you have a a good lead, a good leader, uh, probably we will reuse a lot of these books. Uh, and this is why we need to keep the focus on quality when uh, in all the stages, in all the stages, not only in test. In this, in this, in this schema, test is the most important stage about quality, but this is not good. We need to start thinking about quality from the beginning. Mm, something else? For example, guys, you can see bugs or issues here in release. This is something ridiculous. I mean, you are paying uh, and you are investing a lot of money here in this stage in order to have a lot of tester and, and many hours checking the application, but you still have issues in release in production. So it doesn't make sense. And this is like a, something normal, something common in, in software we will have issues in production is something common so you you will expect that so how to reduce the issues in production if you start checking in every stage the issues that we have that we that your project has and try to fix it as soon as possible and and you can reduce the the, the amount of issues but finally uh, to have uh, if you have a lot of tester here or a, your, uh, a lot of effort in testing this, this the software or the project before move to release it, is it, this is not um something that uh, makes you feel uh or, or, i mean this is not something that is going to avoid issues in in production there is uh, no possibility to uh, to uh, to have zero issues in production, only you know, reduce that possibility. Mm, something else, guys? Okay, let's move forward. And um, so the idea now is in 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 you know in modern project with DevOps um, suites and with the tools that we currently have is to have um, continuous quality. So see, we start a project right now, we have to think in quality um, um, at the same time, I mean, from the beginning, from the beginning. So we can set up, for example, unit testing when we are um, creating the project at the beginning and using Azure DevOps and this kind of tool, we can automate the execution of unit testing and check um, our project constantly, continuously. Okay, also if a tester identifies something that is wrong and we can automate the task in order to check that specific scenario, we can create an automation task to check that. So continually we are creating scripts, we are creating automate tests, we are creating unit tests, we are creating all the things that we need in order to keep a high quality in our project. So at the beginning, we will have books probably as well but we have many tools in order to avoid big issues or avoid, avoid issues um, in delivering new versions. Because finally, with the, with the tools that we have, we can identify the issue easily before moving to, uh, to production. So this is the idea. This is the new concept of quality. So this is why some companies are um, are moving forward and 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 trying to to hire more automate automation tests uh, testers and not uh, manual tester uh, because finally this is the only way that we can uh, reduce uh, in, in du during all the stages the uh, issues and the bugs in in the in the project. So let's see a demo about this. Um, we uh we that you already uh, you already saw the uh, a demo with dubnet uh, so we will have this project in azure devops 
uh, the code is there in Azure DevOps. We will have um, a, a pipeline that is going to execute the project, is going to compile it, is going to check it, and then is going to uh, execute the unit the unit test. And finally, we will get a code coverage report. For this, uh, we will use an additional tool, uh, like extension in Azure DevOps, uh, that we can use in order to, to generate these kind of reports. The name is report generator, report generator. So um, that's another important thing to highlight about Azure DevOps. You can install more tools, more extension if you need it. Uh, so it's, it's not only about the, 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 the basic functionality, it's about the extension that you can install in order to potentialize uh, your project. So let's see this demo. Okay, let me let me share with you the demo here. So one second. Yes, so we have Azure DevOps here. So this is the UI, the interfacing in Azure DevOps. It's pretty simple. Um, we have uh, like a some sub uh, apps, like a small apps uh, for uh, specific functionalities in, during the project, for example, boards for uh, planning, repos for uh, repo repositories, uh, pipelines to automate tasks, uh, test plan for uh, planning and executing the um, test plans, um, and also to integrate with uh, unit testing and automation testing in the project. So let's go to uh, the repos first. So we have here the code, okay? Coverlet demo. This is the same code that I showed you before. You can see here the folders with the two projects, the console application and the test project. Okay, so let's go to pipelines. We have two pipelines here. So I, I have two demos to show you. The first demo here, coverlet, I will edit this pipeline, is a um, YAM file, okay? Uh, this is the new way to create, uh, well, it's not the new way, but, uh, um, you know, Microsoft want to use this way now because you can reuse this code in other uh, tools. Like, for example, you can use reuse this code in, in GitHub Actions or GitLab, Etc. because it's something like a generic. So maybe you have to perform some changes here in the code, but it, it, in general is, is going to work. Um, so in this case, we have a task in order to build the project. So first we will we will check if the project is, is compiling fine. Then we will execute the command test in order to execute the, the, the test in the project. Then uh, we will execute this command in order to get the code coverage. So in this case, we are executing the command test, but also we are adding the, the parameters no build and also collect coverage true. So with this command, we will get the code coverage. Addition, uh, up to that, we have this command here, which is coverlet output format uh, cobertura. We, with this, we want to, to have the, the report in a specific, um, in a specific format because Report generator, the tool or the extension that we will use in order to, to have this report, use this specific format here. And this is why we I am adding this parameter. Okay, we, we, we don't want to, we don't have a console here to see the result. Actually, yeah, we, we have the logs, but the idea is to see the results in, in like a, some uh, visuals, some UI. Uh, and this is why we need to use this parameter. And then, uh, finally, we need to publish the result. Uh, the, this parameter is going to generate this file here, which is coverage cobertura uh, XML. Okay, so we will use this in order to generate the report um, um, in the UI using report generator. So this is the first the first demo. I will execute this one. Uh, I will use um, a master branch. Uh, let's run. So we need to wait uh, some um, one minute or two minutes. And um, meanwhile, we can go to to see the the other um, another another pipeline here that we have. 
I will edit this one. And this one is exactly the same file line. It's exactly the same file line. But here, we are not using a YAML file. We are using the interface here, the wizard in Azure DevOps. So if you don't know how to create a YAML file, if you are not expert in Azure, in, in DevOps in general, in this kind of a, a, a automated task, you can use this visual tool and you only have to specify, for example, uh, the command. Um, uh, this is, I mean, you can you can build everything here only with, with your mouse and, you know, performing some clicks. Uh, so here we are restoring the application, then we are building the application. We are executing the, the unit test using the command test for .NET. And then we are using this the command test, but with the parameters related to, to coverage. So we have here no build, so we don't have to build the project again. Uh, in, uh, this, this is only for performance, you know, to improve the performance because we don't have to uh, build the project, just execute the, because we already built the project here in, in this in this step. And also we have the same parameters, call it coverage through to get the coverage and a parameter to uh, have an output with a specific format, format which is a cover tool. Okay, and we have this ocean kill here, publish the result and code coverage. And we have the state of report generator here. Uh, this report generator is going to generate the report using a code coverage cobertura, the, find, the file generated, generated in the state before. And that's it. That's the, the, the idea. Okay, so both file lines are doing the same thing. All the all the same steps, but we using a different format. So if we navigate to a uh, coverlet demo two minutes ago, it finished. So we can see that um, it, it execute the pipeline. We can see here the log of the job. If we want to see more details, we can we can go to here. Or if you want to see a visual um, like a, a visual tool, we can use here co coverage which this was generated by report generator, which is the extension that, that I installed uh, in order to, to, to have this. We can see the percentage here, the same percentage that we, we saw in, in the application. And uh, we can see more, more detail here, classes, assemblies, files, code, and oh, Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, more, more details about, about, about the code coverage. Uh, this is a free tool, so this is why we have here sponsor uh, button in order to you know donate um, something to to this uh, um, to this um, to this um, community, and also we have here the possibility to see the how many tests are passing, um, and yeah, that's the this is the the, the idea. This is um, something integrated, already integrated in Azure DevOps. But code coverage is something extra that I um, yeah that I have to to install using report generator. Okay, so this is this is the idea. Uh, if you want to install more you, you tools, you can go to the marketplace here. Okay, and you can use for you can search for example the the extension that I am using is report generator. Report. Oh, sorry. Mm, I don't see. Okay, yeah, it's here. Completely free report generator. So this is uh, uh, closely related to uh, code coverage, and it supports all these tools here. Coverlet, which is the tool that we are using, but also it works with Open Cover, dot Cover, Visual Studio, and Cover, many things. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's the idea. So let's see, let's move forward with the slides. Let's continue with the slides. So we already see this demo. And now we are talking, we are talking about Azure Test Plan. So Azure Test Plan is uh, another tool in Azure DevOps. Um, this is related to create um, 
um, some uh, create test plans in, in our project manually and execute it using a, a amazing tool that uh, we will we will check uh, later um, with this tool we have the possibility to um, check step by step if the uh, if our plan is working or not and also we can report uh, bugs or issues if we if we find something during uh, this process so that's the idea so it's, it's pretty pretty nice because visually i mean using a, a visual visual ui you can you can see if what, what is the step you can identify what is the step that is not working fine and is is something more you know the, the developer is going to have more details about the situation about the issue in the application so this is the problem with test plan as i said before we have five free users in um, Azure DevOps in the basic plan. So we can start using Azure DevOps uh, right now, right? But then we have to pay $6 per user, per additional user to, to that plan, to that subscription. But if we want to use test plan, we need to pay uh, um, $52 per month, uh, Per user, and this is really expensive. This is why some people don't use this tool. It's amazing. It's really good. I mean, I I know this is um with this tool you don't have to have other tools for quality or for or for the testers uh, uh for the tester in the company. It's it's enough. It have all the the things that we need. But it's really expensive to pay. Uh, but finally, yeah, it depends on on or your company, some company maybe has uh, the budget for this and some company maybe have to, uh, to, you know, to have a work around or, you know, look for other tools because yeah, it could be uh, really expensive. So let's see how this test plan works with the unit testing and, and yeah, how we can create a test plan and also how this work with, with unit testing. So we have test plan here. Um, for example, I have a demo here. For example, if we want to check, uh, we have a test plan to check the authentication. So we can select this test plan here. We can we can execute um, using the browser. And the idea here basically is a, a tester is going to see all these steps. Obviously, this is a simple uh, demo, but finally, in in a real project, we can we can have a lot of details here, a lot of steps in order to uh, test a specific scenario. So in this case, we can say, hey, yeah, um, I could set the user, I could um, set the password, I could, I perform a click in on sign sign in, but finally the authentication was not uh, successful, or maybe the application is not navigating to the home page. So I will mark this like is not passing. And I can add a comment here. And also I can, for example, take a screenshot, right? A screenshot or um, for example, I can create a issue here directly manually. And if, as you can see, we can automatically in the description, we can see the all the steps uh, that are passing and all the steps that are failing in for this scenario for this test plan in particular so the tester is going to have more sorry the developer is going to have more details about the situation with this scenario in particular with this book that we need to fix uh, so this is why i like it, this this module is it's amazing but it's, it's a little expensive this, Okay, so we can assign the ticket, we can add a title here, we can add more details. Uh, this is um, a link that is automatically created in order to, to um, uh, create a relationship between this new issue and the test result and the, and, the, and the test that we are doing here. So this is automatically created. It's great. Or we can, for example, pass this and save and close. Okay, so now we can see here that uh, this uh, test plan is passing, and we can have we can we have a chart here. 
Um, oh, okay, we, we need to create it. We need to create the chart uh, manually. But if we don't go to rooms, this is another important section here. We can see the executions in um, the execution in, in our project. So we have this test plan here, which is test plan one, the test plan that I showed you before. And you can see the tag here manual because it, it was a manual testing. But also we have here uh, these uh, uh, results, these, these records related to the uh, unit testing that we execute before. If we go to the details, we can see that, uh, for example, how many tests we have here. We have only one test. The test is passing, and we can see the test result here. We can see the details. This is why I, I, I love this tool. For example, in, in this case, we only have one unit test, right? But imagine that we have uh, 1,000, something really large. So here we can navigate and see the unit tests that are failing and why those unit tests are failing. We can see the error here. We can see uh, the issues in general. So if we go to the code, we can see here the name of the unit test, which is calculation to items. And it's exactly the same that uh, we have here. So, it, it, you know, this tool is it, it check is getting all the information from the unit testing and is creating like a, like a report about that. And also we have the, the option to create a bug here uh, additionally. Filter, filters, um, search about, about uh, between all the, the, the unit tests and that's the, that's the idea. So uh, I have this tool because I, I have a uh, um, um, enterprise subscription because I am Microsoft MVP. But finally, normally, if you create a, a, um, a free account, probably you will not see this option or you will not able to uh, join to the to the to these menus because finally, yeah, you have to pay the the, the special subscription with the basic plan um, plus uh, test plans. That's the idea. So let's uh, go back to the slides. And ah, that's it. <laughs> and that's it. And thank you very much. And um, this is all that, that I want to share with you today. And I hope uh, you can find this uh, talk or and these demos useful for you. If you have doubts, questions, or if, if you need help with something related to Azure DevOps, I, 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 I am free to, to help with that because I have some experience with, with these kind of scenarios. And also, if you have a question about, about this topic today, about the, the, the talk, uh, yeah, feel free to, to ask. And I think we have, okay, thank you, great presentation. Thank you very much.